Okay, episode 21 is going to get started here. Let's make sure we're kind of going live on a few things before we kind of get started going through the spiel. Episode 21. Okay, looks like that YouTube is kicking up. Got to watch a commercial. Okay. Just watching the commercial. Looks like a pretty cool game on Twitch. Give it a second. <laughs> all right, Facebook plugged in. Hopefully all three are connected. Just waiting for some replies kind of coming in. Looks like Twitch finally did. Okay. So we should be good on that. Okie dokie, welcome guys. Episode 21, cannot believe it. My name is Brett Briley. Um, I'm a freelance concept character artist and stuff. How goes it our time? Art and time. Uh, working in the film and game industry. Uh, you can find my work at www.bbriley.com where you can find variations of the stuff I sell. And within my shop, you can find um, where I'm selling some of the kits and t-shirts and stickers. Always appreciate the support about if you're interested in reading up about me where I came from plus all my little links and stuff that you can actually find um, click on my work this is just some of the examples if you just click on my work it just has a variation if you go to 2d and 3d you can find more um, 3d corresponds to more of my game stuff any kind of press which I'm still bad at where you can find some interviews and the videos of course and contact me through this as well you can also find me at my art station sorry trucks going on uh, www.artstation.com forward slash spark and this is where I kind of will be updating here and there always like the attention and then instagram.com forward slash b briley underscore art where I have posted most of my stuff uh, a lot of the 3d printing aspects as well and some of the stuff I'm showing you today and you can always find me through the pixelogic.com um, through the zbrush live author and then b briley or, you know Brett briley so and this is all where they kind of they do keep up as uh, all the streams and stuff and the breakdown of each episode i also work with a couple group of guys uh james kane and martin verhoeven talented guys uh we got together to call we called grim together we are grim you can find us at uh, www.wearegrim.com where we sell uh some of our different kits um the latest one being the kit for the jungle warrior from martin verhoeven uh, actually, we only have, I think, a few left, but of course, if you guys want to take a look at some of that, there's Martin, there's myself and James, and there is the kit. You could always, um, you know, check out the different pieces we have, and of course, we appreciate the support, and you can find ours, our Instagram at uh, www.instagram.com forward slash we are grim. We need to get some of the different posts. So this is the Eldorado piece that will be coming up shortly from James Kane that I printed for him, and some of the different stuff on us. So... Okay, let's get started today. How goes the side effects? How goes it? I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the name. And uh, pre-drag, how goes it? So let me go ahead and start. Um, this is a um, Hellboy that I've been working. I, I usually don't do licensed characters, to be quite honest. I, I kind of create my own stuff unless I'm working for a game that has their, their licensed characters. So I jumped, uh, since Hellboy was coming up on his birthday, I sat there and I jumped into the Hellboy bandwagon. This is my take on him. I sort of took a look at the different uh, Hellboys. I like all of them. Like Magnolia is, is a, you know, awesome. Love the character. But I decided to kind of take certain aspects of uh, the old and the new and um, kind of mix it up. So kind of, and I also gave him eyebrows and to help his frown and stuff. Just felt weird without his eyebrows. So I'll be doing some renders of this guy up here pretty soon. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to go over top creating a quick character off of uh, Skinned Head. Let me go ahead and close this down. I guess you guys can see it real quickly. Um, you know, the gun, the eyes, everything. And the idea was he was kind of taken from one of the old comics where he's kind of fighting a lot of the tentacles. Uh, he was just kind of wrapping it around and just using it to light a cigarette and stuff like that. Kind of gives some attitude. So let me go ahead and close this down because the file is kind of large. And let me go ahead and start back up. How goes it, Shabhan? How goes it? 
So we're going to be touching upon, um, of course, sculpting, concepting, um, but then we're also going to um, go ahead and do some rendering. And I'm, this is this is an area that I'm not great at, guys. So uh, I want to kind of do this with you to kind of show you some of the things I'm learning um, and so on. So. Uh, but some of the different tricks to render in ZBrush uh, for those that are don't have, um, you know, KeyShot or all the different programs and stuff like that. So um, uh, I'm not too sure how to pronounce your name, but uh, you can get the ZBrush program through Pixelogic and .com. Visit them; it's definitely worth um, the uh, the price of it. So let's just go ahead and just set this to 85. I'm going to turn this on. Just give. Actually, I might just turn it off for a little bit. I'm going to turn on symmetry. So I'm just going to start off with just the scanned head. As you can see, I kind of cleaned it up, and just like in the, the usual ones, I had like different levels. So I'm going to just start pulling pulling this character around. I'm just going to do some kind of monster head, uh, something simple, kind of looking for. Um, forms and stuff and I'm not going to be too concerned about you know what I'm going to create because I'm going to just have fun and just look for some you know something to kind of create uh, I probably will bash his nose on and I think his jaws a little bit so And the reason I have the different levels is because I can kind of wipe out some of the, the higher details and such. I'm going to use the mask to kind of grab that ear. So, looking at Hellboy and stuff, I'm probably going to, you know, I, I see a lot of those like Elvin, the Troll. I just saw the Hellboy 2 movie kind of stuff. Um, so, I'm just going to kind of create like a, not an Elvish type character, but. Kind of like more of a bull and kind of play with some of those different directions. Kind of pinch in his mouth. And then when I take this character, I'm going to render him just beyond like the, the typical poly painting stuff I've done. So, uh, how's it going, Indy? So, let's make him a little bit bulkier. Let's get some of the human element out of him. I'm making him a little bit stronger. Going off the concept, like, you know, maybe he is kind of like a bull. Okay. And I'm going to probably keep. some of his more human aspects to him. Um, looks like I got kind of messy on that scan down there. So I'm going to keep my local symmetry on. That kind of helps me whenever I grab it. It allows me to kind of move stuff around. And let's go ahead and make his mouth a little bit longer to get more of that horse. Horse kind of aspect to him, and horse bull. It's going fairly well. I'm kind of uh, I've been fighting squirrels and stuff. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to pay like a thousand dollars to have these squirrels that have been burning into my dining room wall and stuff and driving the dogs crazy. And then uh, I had a squirrel that was in the um, when I was kind of showing the guy around to try to find out where they were where at and coming in from. Um, the dogs actually found a squirrel in the, uh, like the, you know, those little baskets you roll up the hoses on and stuff like that. We're freaking out. And so the guy lifts it up. And of course, there was a, I'd say, a very young squirrel in there. And then, of course, he stayed in there overall night. So I was getting kind of worried about him. But um, he thankfully he finally left. But man, I was not too happy with uh, <laughs> I was like, why? Why my house? Why do you have to find my house? And I got a full street of them. But, um, so, but I guess that they, uh, they're pretty vicious of uh, not being able to leave the area. They, you get rid of them, you have to take them like miles away, and they still can come back because they leave pheromones. So they pretty much piss everywhere. 
leaving their pheromones for them to find. Um, so, not cool. Not cool. How's yours going? Well, uh, we have like a little miniature pincher who's sleeping right there on the couch that is really good at capturing stuff, but he just had uh, a recent um, dental appointment where he had like 12 teeth ripped out. <laughs> So I'm kind of like, otherwise I would go, go at him. Cause when we first moved into the neighborhood, we were, we were taking him for a walk and the wife was like, you know, what's in there. And Jack's jumped into like the whole bunch of weeds. And then next thing I see a, a big, big field mouse, let's just go up in the air and then two chomps and it was gone. So, uh, so I don't know how well he could do anymore, but, uh, plus I, it looked like a little young squirrel. So even though he cost me some money, I felt bad. So on this guy, just kind of thinking, I um, kind of probably want to bring him into the alien. So I'm going to kind of, and, and, and a lot of times what I was saying, guys, when you're just creating, just push and pull things. The, re the reason I keep so low is for this reason. I can just kind of try to push things, try to see what I'm liking, you know, um, and I'm thinking Hellboy-ish slash elf slash alien so you can get a lot of different things from it so the design that I will do on the neck can probably bring it more to the alien so if I want to have some weird flesh tones or flesh ish stuff that I do um, that will kind of make it a little bit more alien I could also um, let's bring in a sphere that's a big sphere drink it down so if I want to sit there and do some kind of, where I've done before, like a hood elemental or, or some kind of shelf or some kind of, you know, not necessarily have to be a horn. I mean, I said it was kind of like a bull, but I could do some kind of weird, weird thing to help push out the alien aspect. So let's just try to throw it in for a second. And this is where it's kind of fun. You're almost kind of, putting hats on humans kind of thing. It's the, the, these elements are going to just add to that creature. So that's why throwing bone or other kind of things to help give another material hit or another kind of interest um, to it. So, you know. And also let's go ahead and just add some more spheres just to get some eyeballs in there. And usually, like I say, don't worry about if it turns out, if it doesn't turn out, as long as you're sculpting, that's the big thing. That's just, that's the fun you should have. Um, by getting that eye in there, that just kind of helps me uh, shape this. So that's pretty important to get in pretty quickly. I'm just going to go to Z Plugin, Subtool Master, and I'm just going to mirror that piece and merge them together. So that way I have those eyes. Um, now, I have been using within the demos Z98 as a startup material. I like that a lot. Uh, Marlon, Marlon Nunez uh, has released um, some different materials. He has this Mr. Skin Blend, which is really kind of nice, just a gray that he uses. And he also did one uh, that you can find on his site, Mr. Eyeball. Um, so I'm going to give him some props, some pretty cool things that you can actually add. So I'm going to throw in this material because I usually like to separate the eyes. So I'm just going to hit M for the material because I'm not going to do any color quite yet. And I'm just going to go to my draw and... Uh, I'm sorry, color and fill object. And so I'm filling this at RGB intensity. This is also material intensity at 100%. So whenever I kick back onto a different material, you can actually see that. Now, if I don't want those to be quite so, you know, blaring, this is where I can go back into my material RGB. Um, let's go to a standard and let's just do a freehand and let's just, let's just die those down a little bit. So I'm only going to be doing RGB and let's just kind of give it some shadow. So it looks like it's just hanging in there a little bit. Okay. And my RGB intensity is 30, so I have to do three swipes to get close to 100. So that's what these are great for. But I'm just going to kind of just set this in. I don't, I don't want to give it any kind of eyes necessarily yet because it's alien. Of course, if you don't have any kind of pupils or if you do any kind of funky stuff like I've done before, um, you know, it's just giving myself something to work on. So as you can see right there, I've just got a couple elements that I'm throwing in here. 
Uh, let's go ahead and bring his neck down. And the reason I've been doing the scanned heads is just to kind of help me get some flow and some elements uh, from the actor, just like they would from um, a real actor when they're kind of creating. So that's why I started doing this and also to kind of help people get a good start because um, as you see, I pull in a lot of spheres, which I do a lot, and I do a lot of creatures from spheres. Um, though you typically find yourself doing similar patterns. That's why, you know, people kind of say you do the same creature sometimes is because I have that pattern that I kind of fall towards. Um, so the, the scan data helps you pull away a little bit from those and look for different things. It's sort of like doing scribbles. If uh, you have a sheet of a whole bunch of different scribbles, you will come up with a lot of different creatures because you're finding shapes and things within the scribbles. So, uh, Indy, uh, uh, just look up Marlon. Um, uh, Nunez, he's, uh, you should be able to find, I think I'm pronouncing his last name right. Um, if not, I'll try to, I'll try to show it next time. Uh, just look up also the, the material hits, Mr. Eyeball version two, he calls it, and Mr. Skin Blend Material. So when you do a Google search on those, you should be able to find, he also has it to where he's doing, um, some courses and stuff. So he's a great artist. I actually met Marlon during a, in the, the ZBrush Summit Challenge, a Sculpt Off Challenge, so. Very hard challenger. So, yeah, let me see. Hey, how's it going, Yenkin? How's it going, Mischief? Um, yes, actually, uh, um, well, it, it, I've worked with him as well on Pacific Rim. So there's a lot of people that work on these movies for sure. So I didn't realize so. Uh, Marlon worked on. He just did some posts of stuff he he did for Game of Thrones stuff, which was was looking phenomenal. He is, you know, there's a lot of great artists that are um, phenomenal at rendering, and this is why I'm kind of sort of trying to I'm going to try to do this guy to render him out as well because I'm learning. This is the area that I'm not very good at color, all that stuff, and this is why I started doing. Um, the, the ZBrush episodes really to kind of push myself to try to different, you know, get past just the design, just the sculpt. So I'm now just kind of. So I don't want to take too long. On, okay. I don't want to take too long in just um, sculpting. I want to kind of go past. Now, on my Z, my standard brush when I kick back. I had RGB on. I'm not doing any kind of color, so I'm going to turn that back onto my Z edition, so I can actually sculpt instead of just kind of worrying about the um, color at the moment. Not there yet. Not there. Patience, patience. So, yeah, spheres, spheres, spheres. <laughs> but yes, what's up, Martin? That's what I. Grim Buddies and the thing, you gotta check out his work. He, and again, those little nods I brought up in the beginning, uh, go ahead and check out. I think he, I think we have three left of, of those kits. Uh, they went pretty fast. So, so I'm gonna kinda make this nose a little bit more bull-like, but I wanna be careful, because I don't wanna bring him into, he is a, Monitor or Minotaur, or um, how are you pronounce that? So I'm going to kind of make his bridge a little bit thicker, and I'm going to bring in some odd designs to kind of help myself pull away from doing a mythical creature more towards an alien creature. So, and these will help. That's why I was doing like these little flesh things to the top. That was my attempt to try to get away from more of a bull more of a um, creature aspect that is you know, dated a bull, I guess. Okay. And Martin's also like, I've, he's tried to show me some of his, his skill stuff on his rendering and that's, I still cannot quite get it, so. I'm gonna have to keep bugging them until I do. All right. So again, I'm just fleshing out some of the details down his neck. Gotta give him some 
form into his chest. It's pecked the top of his pecs. Let's flush out his delts here. Sweet. Sounds good, buddy. Appreciate it. And I do have a, a few renders that I'll be posting out a little bit on the Hellboy. I was trying to uh, sit there and learn. So I'll have those up. Yeah, more spheres. I don't know where else to put spheres. I'm gonna kind of let's make his jawline a little bit sharper. A little bit out. And let's not back his brows a little bit. Now the brushes that you see me using are just I keep them very simple uh, a lot because People are just learning, and so I don't want to kind of like give them too much of the different brushes you could use. There's so much that you have when here. So you can see right here, I have a pretty wide breakdown, but I try to keep it just the simple, you know, one through eight that I have. Um, so I kick through a lot of, um, of the similar brushes. One is my standard, two is my move, three is trim dynamic, which is great for making a little bit more of those flat, hard surface um, hits or just the organic shapes that I need to emphasize and direction. Uh, four is my pinch in case I want to tighten uh, and I know some of you guys know this and um, no, I actually had color on, I don't want that. Clay. And clay is great because it has you know just a, a general kind of clumpiness to the standard. You can also bring in your own different alphas. Uh, they actually in clay tubes pretty much bring up like a square so when you're when you're doing that it just adds more of a solid alpha hit. Uh, which is great, but I have a tendency to just go to clay tubes. Uh, six is my in-flat brush where I use to kind of pump up some of the fattier folds. Like if I want to give a little more definition to the, the folds of his eyes and the weight of the brow, I can do that. So that was one of my dogs. So... So let's kind of give him some more of a ridge to push out some of that alien feel to him. Kind of demon, demon alien. I don't know if that might take it to... I think I'm going to make him demon. Let's go ahead and... Or a little bit alien demon, baby. Hellboy. Let's give his brow just a little bit more. So let's play with his ear. Um, his ear is kind of kind of cow-like, so I'm going to kind of add some oddity to it, maybe like bring down some of this bridge, maybe to bring in more of that elfin. Feel to it. I'm going to use mask to mark out the area that I want and I'm going to hold down control and click off so that it allows me to kind of grab the area that I want and pull it out. Uh, if you hold down control and you click on it, it's going to kind of soften that um, area of grab. If I hold down alt and click on it, it's going to sharpen. Okay. Uh, so this is great like if you just want to kind of, if I want to grab more of this, I can just hit alt couple times and then that way it just allows me to grab more of the surrounding area. The higher you go the more you'll grab as well so be aware. Um, depends on your level of detail. Let's bring that down. So let's say if I wanted to define this front earlobe I might kind of just mask out this little section inverse it so that way I can kind of use my like a damn standard brush to kind of push this down A little bit more. Okay. And I can use that earlobe or that um, 
front section of the ear to kind of make myself go down the chin. Again, making it a little bit more alien. Any questions you guys have or just you're curious on ZBrush or whatever? Yeah, thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. Um, there you go. Art of Heroes. Uh, art, Artheroes.com. There you go. Um, I am using the Cintiq uh, 21... Oh, 22 HD, whatever. I can't remember. <laughs> so I, I just got it like recently. Um, I used the 21 UX, which I loved for the longest time. The old gray ones and stuff. This one's a little bit more widescreen, uh, which I still have a pattern to, to kind of draw within the little section. Actually, I'm sorry. I forgot my camera's down there. So, um, so I have a tendency to draw more towards this corner than this corner up here. Um, so I apologize for those of you watching. I have to attention to that. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of start adding a little bit more detail. Go up a level. I'm going to wipe out. This little section right here, as you can see the poly breakdown when I'm pulling, the um, I'm probably going to Z remesh just to make sure I have a little bit more detail when I do alphas. And I'll go over that process again. And I have a little bit more time so I can actually spend a little bit longer with you guys today. Okay, I'm just going to give it just a little bit more of a back. Now this is where, again, I can do different things to, you know, whatever shapes I add into here, I can probably play, take that design and throw it through the character and kind of give your eye a chance to bounce around. I'm going to Kind of probably make it look like he has a couple different back muscles. So that might be where it's odd. I'm kind of adding like a few different shoulder blades. And his delt is pushed forward a little bit more due to it. So I can take human anatomy, some of my structure from humans, but then just give a little nod to it and then just build upon it and just go in a different direction so it's uh, it can help you to know anatomy for sure and then it doesn't mean you have to stay within the world of 100 percent anatomy okay. or 100 percent human anatomy sorry all right so i'm just Right, I have no clue what I'm making quite yet. I have this in here that I've been playing with, but let's go ahead and take some look to that. Let's see. Dynamic. Let me save where I'm at on this. In case I crash. Um, hey Chris, uh, well I mean I, I, I teach, uh, I've been teaching one-on-one -on -one for quite a while, I've, I've taught classes in colleges and stuff, I probably will be doing a, a small class again uh, to kind of go over this. I've been sharing a lot with the uh, ZBrush Live team and stuff because they've helped me throughout the years, um, but I'm probably going to start pulling back a little bit and do that because I need to, uh, of course, you know, I can't do everything for free, I want to help you guys out, but you know, unfortunately so. Drop me a line if you're interested, um, and uh, but if not, I've done, this is my 21st episode for the ZBrush Live you can find um, as well. So, and I, I do have a few from UARTC and a couple other things that are, are kind of like the older stuff, but go over top of game, game stuff that I've done before too, so. Um, hey, Baba, uh, the common anatomical, sorry, my thing is sticking. I think the thing is just not to be aware of the you know the bone structure underneath. I mean, we we each have our different skulls underneath our heads, um, but a lot of people just go, oh, I'm just aware of the skull, but they're not aware of how the muscles lay over top of that, um, especially on the mouth. Like you have different muscle structures that kind of like push and pull in different directions. Um, 
you know, I, I'm aware of that here's my cheekbone, but I have muscle that I'm 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 aware of underneath this. Um, so that really helps to just go over top of you know the muscle structure um, and how each of the skull is going to be you know placed into it. So learn human anatomy and then even learn an you know animal anatomy and you can just kind of just start making up your creatures from that. So like if his mouth is going to be pursed, uh, dang it. For some reason it's getting stuck guys, apologize. So I have the weight of this and the buildup of the fatty tissue. That's just, that's fat underneath, but I, there's muscles that will pull down from, you know, certain directions on the mouth to define it. So that's how you can kind of do a lot of the different A, E, I, O, U, um, syllables and stuff in our languages. So study that and realize that if I'm going to, um, like if I'm going to dig into this creature, like if, if that's the hollow, you know, here's the jawline underneath, I'm aware that this is where you would have the pit. That's why you notice people that are, you know, older or, you know, those who are like on meth or whatever, you kind of start to see the skin and the muscles decrease and go and pull in. You can actually look at that and kind of, it's kind of scary on some of the stuff, but that will create a lot of the different um, believability uh, to say, well, okay, here's my jaw. I'm aware of that. You know, this might actually have the socket to where then you can sort of start to see the the skull and the jaw line and everything else, but then there's muscle that will kind of build up. And I can just say, okay, if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna build up some of the fat around here. So he's not in any kind of drugs or whatever, but he's kind of, that's just me building up some of the design. And then I can use that to kind of, you know, start to add to this character. Demon drugs. <laughs> yes. Um, well, the thing is, like, when you have muscle, it's usually um, kind of uh, like right here. If I do like this muscle coming down on the neckline, you're gonna the skin is gonna be, and if you want it to be really like it's uh, this is solid muscle and it's kind of uh, taut. And then the skin will be pretty much laying over top of that muscle. It's just as a thin membrane kind of stuff. Fat is where if I'm going, okay, well, here's my hard jawline, right? And, you know, that is just, the skin is right close to it. Fat would be where it kind of hangs. I'll have the droops. I'll have things that kind of lay off of the muscle. Or this is where the skin is. You ever look at one of those, like, cats or dogs that are hairless and stuff, and they're really hanging or you know, when older people actually have they their jowls and the stuff, their their muscles kind of loosen, um, and that just is where the fat or the excess skins going to hang off of it. So that is the different and the hanging skin. Then you can use inflat to kind of bulk up that skin to add like if it's a more of a thicker, chubbier type of skin. So. You just have to kind of play with it and just see what you like, uh, what works. And again, when you're creating, you know, who's to say it's 100% correct? Um, as long as you just are happy with it and you're learning from it. So, see right there, I'm not really happy with that pull because this muscle looks like it's being separated. Um, but by doing a swipe really quickly just to see if I like that direction, I can decide yes or no. Uh, nope. So I'm going to go back down and I'm going to just change the direction. But I had the muscle pull this direction. Had more of that heavier lip on the top and have this jaw top to actually see. And the reason I did it on the lower one is because I'm just seeing if I like that and then figure out the design if it works. And I can have the flesh, the heavier sacks kind of just hang a little bit lower. I'm gonna use pinch to kind of purse that up a little bit, push it down. Okay. And let's go ahead and give them a little bit thicker chin. So we're almost seeing like kind of like a circular thing. Okay. 
All right, now the reason that this went black is because my color went dark, in case you're kind of wondering. So, how's it going, Square? Uh, Chris, uh, I keep in symmetry quite a bit. I, a lot of the times I do um, layer on top down the, uh, you know, or I pose the character um, and then do the asymmetry that way or, you know, uh, because like, let's say if I go, oh, I don't want to do asymmetry, I don't want to just have this here, that will mess up, you know, the character design. So, I, it, sorry, I shouldn't probably do like, he's got a big scar there. Um, those are things I would add on a, for layer, not uh, later. Um, or I'd pose the character and just add those little touches and stuff. You know, it's I'm not going to do two face. You know what I mean? Where I have human and a you know, a total different thing. Because the speed right now, I'm just kind of playing around. Um, and then, but that is that is the thing I want to do on the end. Um, I don't want to add the asymmetry too much. I, James uh, King, whatever he he poses or he sculpts in asymmetry, which is crazy to me. Um, and it's very, but it's very much like what the traditional sculptors have to do. It's like you know, I mean, that's it's like you do one eye, and you're like, oh damn it, I have to do another one because I don't have symmetry. So I'm using the power of this program to just allow me to to speed up on my concepts and speed up on my thoughts of my you know creatures. So okay, yeah, I mean, you, you can you guys can work. As much as you want. Now, I could also do it to where I can use transform and go into posable symmetry. This is where you pose, and then it will keep it. But sometimes I've had that kind of mess up, so I'm kind of. I mean, it's been a while, but just in case. All right, so let's go ahead and change that back a little bit. So I'm looking around the character and I'm kind of deciding what I like or what I need to do. I think I need to add some more definition into his nose region. So let's go up in a few different levels. And he has a he has a pretty normal eye at the moment, so let's go ahead and define out this eyelid section. And I'm going to just add some extra. I'm using the in-flat brush to kind of just give some weight and some flesh build up. Because I'm trying to take him away from being a little bit cow at the moment so I'm gonna give him some crow's feet some detail work around this one going up a level okay. and I'll bring in alphas later to kind of do this but let's just define and I might actually add in like a double eyelid so he's got this eyelid, he's got this eyelid, and then we'll have his brow. Um, let's see how that looks. Okay. Again, I'm using what the scanned data had, but I'm kind of just changing it up. Giving myself some visual difference to make him a little bit more alien, even though I pretty much have eyes, nose, mouth, ears still. So. using some of that direction that I'm building up on the, the eyes, then I can kind of work up into here. And I'm just letting my brush kind of flow around the piece. I'm not really concerned about anything specific. I'm just trying to create shapes, lines. Because uh, the easiest thing you can do is just put it down and then just wipe it back out if it doesn't work. Okay? So... Again, don't be afraid just to 
see if something works. It takes a second to throw it down. It takes a second to take it back off. So, but you'll never know if you, unless you try, people. Find out this mouth area. Okay, and this is where I'm turning the mouth backwards, you know, down. I'm adding some oddities or some weird, like he's got a larger top lip than the bottom lip. Um, Too big, so let's go ahead and add some in flight in there to add some weight. Okay. Now, um, on this one, he's looking pretty, pretty fair. I kind of like a lot of the, the designs on him, but I might play with. Taking them down a little bit lower, not that low, so I can actually see some of the shapes. And this is where I might kind of say, well, to bring him a little bit more alien, I'm probably going to splay out his head a little bit. So I want to kind of go for more of a triangle shape, because um, then I might kind of use these to finish out whatever I'm going to do to the top here. That pit in the jaw is a little bit too much for me, so I'm going to kind of bring in a little bit more fat and weight here, but I'm going to keep those two negatives just to add, again, some more alien feel to see if that works. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for my lines now. I'm looking for the flow around the character. That's why I have a tendency to do a lot of stuff down into the neck personally, uh, because I, I like to lead your eye up. Like if, you're, if your character just has like, hey, look at me down here, and then you just have these whatever pectoral boobies um, and your eye is stuck and there's nothing to lead your eye there's like dead space and there's no lines or direction your eye will stay stationary and it doesn't move as well as it should so in character designs it's just you're trying to to let the person look around your character your con your canvas and kind of stuff so um, just try to do that uh, do those little tricks to kind of you know make it work now I'm going to go to his back and give a little bit more to the neck. And I'm going to bring his neck down a little bit. Uh, what I did is I masked. I just So what I'm doing is just going to use the gizmo tool to kind of stretch just a little bit more. Neck down a little bit more. Let's give him an Adam's apple. Hell, let's give him two. Okay. Or chesties, or neck, 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 neck testes, I guess you want to call it. So let's give him some neck testes. Used to say testicles have to be on the groin region. No one. Necticles. <laughs> Necticles. Yes. Hey, I just made up a whole nother thing. But no, it's this is where you can just have fun. I'm making no shit, guys. It's like art is, is seriously 70% bullshit, 30% skill. So it's, uh, you know, <laughs> how can you not have fun with that? I'm not really worried about it. Um, you know, I just want to create, have fun and teach if I can teach you guys anything today. Okay, so. Okay, I'm pretty good with the design. I've got to kind of, I'm probably going to kind of, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm, what time is it? Okay, not, about 40 minutes in. So I'm going to sculpt just a little bit longer. I'm going to flush out my design and start to clean up a few of these things. So let's get back into this piece right here. Now I've done it, um, to where 
I need to kind of figure out what kind of hood piece I want to make this. Um, yeah, stop sticking. I could turn on, because right now this is on, the geometry is on nothing, so I can turn on sculptors and I can use sculptors to kind of, you know, push and pull and add and quickly get some different looks to the character. Do I want to sit there and, um, let's go to like, let's do a snake hook brush. And then, you know, this is where you can kind of start playing and like, oh, what's it going to look like if he has tons of horns and, you know, yes, no, maybe so. Um, I don't think I want to go to that direction, but I can use, you know, do I want to think of crown of thorns? Um, I can do where he's got kind of more of a tentacle monster. Now, I'm not really worried about what I'm doing right now. He's starting to kind of look like he's almost Cthulhu, but I'm just I'm just trying it out. So by using um, that snake brush, I can I can just kind of, you know, start playing with a little bit. Now, the great thing about doing this is just I'm looking for shapes. I'm seeing what's going to work. And if I don't like this, um, you know, I could just undo it. If I do like this, I would just say, let's go ahead and just make a clone of this. Okay, so I still have it, but I'm going to walk it back because what I should have done is said, um, you know what, I, I'm not too sure about that. So let's go ahead and just go down to morph target. I'm just going to store a morph target. What that does is it keeps a snapshot. Clone allows you to kind of keep it because if you if I went back here and I wiped it all back, as soon as I did the morph target, I lost whatever it was kind of doing. So it's a little trick to kind of kind of go back and forth. So yeah, or then I can sit there and say, you know what, maybe I like those dreads, um, but maybe I like them, you know, a little bit bigger, wider, you know, smaller um, to the back. Maybe I can just flip them under an eighty percent. And make them to where they're kind of, you know, swooping off to the back. You know, he's flying. Uh, or just go, no, I, I don't want that. Um, and just do a couple different designs. By having the morph target, I can actually go in between those two. Morph target still allows me to use my Sculptress. Doesn't affect that one. Uh, in case uh, no one knows what Sculptress is, it just allows you to kind of on the fly, if I turn this on, you can actually, depending on my brush size, I'm, on default, it will add more polys or take away the polys. Um, so it kind of does the decimation and, you know, zebra mesh and, well, not a zebra mesh because it's not clean, but it allows you to kind of do a few different things that you want to test out. So I'm going to kind of... I mean, those, those octopus dreads weren't too bad. I, oh, let me see. Because he feels... I'm going to append a sphere. Let's turn off this helmet or this thing. Um, I'm going to turn it. It's going to make it a little bit... Easter's coming up. Let's make it a little bit more egg-like. Make sure I'm on symmetry. It's almost kind of like his brain. And I don't know if I want to do dreads quite yet. Uh, so I'm, right now I'm just thinking like maybe this is just not necessarily Easter egg, but you know, more brain like. So I'm going to play with the shape. Use an in flat to kind of have it drooping just a little bit.
I sort of like that. Yes, I know it's another big head kind of guy, but oh well. And it looks like a souffle that's dropped. Okay, so now on this one, then I can actually come back and let's bring in that other piece. Okay, let's just take this. Let's just move this around a little bit. Swipe those out for a moment. And if you see right here, like when these kind of went off, I'm not really worried about it. I'm adding a lot more poly to this. So that's why it's kind of going away. for sure. Now let's go ahead and bring this back and around the ear. Okay. So that way it's not quite tentacles. Now on this one right here, ah, it's weird. I think it's sticking. I'm going to use the move tool, but not the gizmo, because I want to sit there and drag, and I want to just grab this little section. So this way I can then use scale, or I can move this around to have it laying around. So it's going to be coming down the neck, and then it's just going to kind of... So we're, we're going to use the octopus feel to it, but I'm going to kind of move this a little bit around. And you could go back to the regular gizmo. I have a tendency just to sometimes use the ones for different things. So, all right. So let's just say it's kind of going up. Now, let's see what it looks like without. I actually like it without that little spirit thing because it's taking, I'm losing, like if you guys look at the silhouette, that's just looking too, too odd, but this one actually has a nice flow and I'm actually seeing the direction of this come down. So I'm going to carry that up and around. So now I'm seeing that shape that I like. Add a little bit more weight and bring this down here. Okay, I'm going to. So the great thing about sculptures is it just allows me to kind of play around, try different shapes fairly quickly, and not get too invested into it unless I want to. Okay, so. All right, it's good. And let's just kind of, I'm gonna to go to my sculptures and I'm gonna go down and I'm going to kind of, so as you can see right here, it was a little bit too low. So I'm just adding the definition in here of the polys. And you gotta be careful about how much you go on this because uh, you can bog down your computer because there's different within your stroke section you have the sculptors pro right here you can mess with this i have a tendency not but that way it allows me to um if i go out of sculptures and i smooth then that just is giving me the detail to smooth out now all right and i'm going to use in flat to kind of first give definition to it I'm adding enough polygons to sit there and be able to manipulate the shape with because it's when I did it before it just wasn't happening enough. So now that I have that detail, I'm going to then go out of sculptures, use my inflet brush, and then smooth it down a little bit. Okay. Alright, 
Now, I could do the same thing. I could turn this right now. Because I have divisions on this one, I would have to delete out all my divisions to go into the sculptures to clean it up. Um, I'm not going to want to do that at the moment, but I'm going to clean this character up here in a second. Because the definition I do up here will not be enough. And I also want to kind of take out some of the, the line work. I want to give your, your eye a little area to rest upon because I want to lead the detail to this little front section of the face. And now that I have this, tentacle thing kind of coming around, then I might actually just bring in some detail to look like it's interacting with it. So in a way it's kind of been there. Okay. Let's take a look at that ear. Again, I might go a little bit more to Alien by changing the ear. Go down and play with that. Now that I have that head structure on top, I am now paying attention to my details that are going around in there. Okay. Let's lay this down. Okay. I'm not spinning it around for fun, guys. It's doing it on its own. <laughs> All right. I'm not too concerned for the back right now because probably won't see it, but I at least want to have some of the design going. Yeah, and I, honestly, with the... Uh, this headdress because it's let's say if we're gonna give it the male or whatever we're gonna play with attracting the female then that's where the color can come into it. I think I'm going to now that I have those take out the eyes. I'm gonna move the eye sockets. I'm taking out the eyes for a second because I want to move this around and take a look at where now that I have some of that shape going. Move this around a little bit. So it's gone from a little bit demon with neck necticles, I can't even say that word, to a little bit more of a elfish alien. Let's make it a little bit less demon, a little bit more. Humanoid alien. Okay. And then once you kind of like, oh, okay, I sort of like that direction. Then bring back in the eyes. And I'm just going to use the move tool. Um, right now I have symmetry. I'm going to turn off symmetry and I'm just going to go ahead and um, reset. And then I'm going to, what the heck, oops, first you have to be on the eyes. I was like, what's happening? Turn off the symmetry, okay, and I'm just going to um, reset to the middle. Turn on the symmetry, just to make sure I'm back on it. And let's pull these back up into the eyes, okay. Yeah, he's kind of getting a little tribal, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I could actually... Maybe that's what these are, Lyritard. That these are the, the, these are the bactic, bacticles to attract the females in case they don't see the fronticles on the necticles. So again, it's your own creatures, guys. You could do whatever. And if anybody has a problem with it, just tell them not to look. It's, it's amazing. Don't look if you don't like it. 
All right. I might. So now I'm just taking a look to see if I like it. I think the ears are a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is go back down onto the head here. I'm going to just go to solo really quickly to make it a little bit easier to kind of grab. Because as I take that away, it seems like a little bit... Oops. Make sure I'm in symmetry. And I'm just going to kind of grab this little section. Control alt is to deselect. And let's go back in. And I'm just going to hold down alt and just move this gizmo to the area that I want. You can change the, by holding down alt, you can change the pivot point. So that's, that's where I can use it to where I'm going to maybe make it a little bit smaller by scaling. I think that works a little bit better. And I'm going to use the move tool to kind of pull out some of the flesh in between. Is there any way to make the objects collide with each other? Yes, you can. I mean, if I use the eyeballs as a, um, as a thing, if I have the move tool, if you go like this, and if I let go, then it's going to kind of stick together. That's where you're colliding it together. So as long as it's on the same subtool, um, otherwise it would be separate elements by subtool based. And you get okay. Ah, don't know why it's doing that. Okay, I think by looking at this, I want to give um, a little bit. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm fighting with my Wacom. I'm going to kind of change a little bit of the anatomy of the body just because it's kind of getting a little too. I want to have some negative space in there that uh, you can actually see. So either I might have to just go back to this first one and just kind of open that up a little bit and then I'm kind of probably, let's see in the pinch. I just did the pinch tool real quickly just to alien. I just took out the nose. Okay. And then I'm going to go up the layers and then whatever some of that definition I had I'm just going to use some of that weird oddity to kind of create a little interest. So even though I don't have a nose does not necessarily mean I can't have some interesting shapes. Or maybe the nose kind of went up to the side a little bit. Or maybe there's a double nose. Um, just test it out to see what works. Noble, what is it, girl? I think they want to go find the squirrel. So as you can see, just by trying something, it's now changed the character. If you, any time that you guys want to sit there and you're like, I like this design, but I want to see, and you're nervous about it, either make a morph target, or you just clone that little section, and you just kind of keep building up and stuff. So um, don't be afraid to try it. Okay. Where's it going? Where is it going? You gonna go potty? You gonna go outside? Sorry, guys. I can't tell if she's... She's a little bit old. So, do you have to go potty? Or, or she just wants attention. Okay. So, let me go ahead and quickly... Um, I just saved it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab this whole piece right here. I'm going to make a clone because I just want to have this piece by itself. Okay, so it's at level five right now. I'm going to just kind of clean out a little bit. And as you can see right there, by taking off some of that, I have a pretty interesting character that I can see different shapes now that I can take. This is where I kind of, you can just do these different snapshots and try different things. I'm going to make a duplicate really quickly of this. I'm going to go down a few different levels. As long as I'm kind of getting the main shape of it, it's not seeing too much of it. And I'm going to delete the higher, delete the lower. And I'm going to go to Dynamesh. And I'm going to make this about a 512 resolution because I don't need to have too much. I'm just trying to grab the main details. Go 1024 and divide. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to see any kind of issues. This might be an issue right there where there's like a little hole. It's too close. We'll see. And then I'm going to go ahead and do zero measure. And let's go ahead and make sure I'm on symmetry. And let's do zero measure of two. Yeah, okay. Let me take our potty real quick, guys. I'll be right back. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so as I can see, um, let me see, catch up where you guys are at. Yeah, Dynamis will knock those into it. So as you see right here, I have the issue to where there is a negative, okay? Um, so that means that this piece right here was a little bit too close to get rid of this. I'm just gonna go into this first piece here let me go ahead and just delete out that because I've got to do that step again. And I'm just going to kind of use the inflate brush with the clay and flat brush. And I'm just going to make that a little bit thicker because those pieces just got a little bit too close to each other. So I'm just giving the geometry a little bit separation there. And I'll clean this up here in a second. Okay. And then I'm going to make a duplicate. Do the same process. Just go down a few different levels. Three is fine. And then let's do resolution of 1024 again. And the reason I'm doing this is just to give, you don't need to calculate all that. I just need to have a fairly good base for Z remesh to kind of get it. Two is fine. You can go down a lower level if you want. And then this is just a good cleanup because I'm just going to use this cleaned up like little mesh to kind of reproject my details from the character to make sure that my alphas and my poly paint really has a good amount of detail. Otherwise, my pushing and pulling on the other parts will kind of like start to stretch and not have a very good detail. So now, as you can see right here, those ears are fine. I'm looking around to make sure that there's no other kind of issues. Let's take a look at that, that's fine. Did a fairly good job. And I'm sitting about 7,000, that's good. So. What I'm going to do now is just kind of go down to my project within the geometry of the subtool pool palette. I'm just going to project. Now it's asking right here, uh, do I want to project uh, polypaint? So there's some kind of polypaint on here. I don't visually see it, but because I have that brush on right there, that's why it's asking. You can say, yeah, go ahead and project. I'm not really worried about it. Polypaint does take a little bit longer sometimes, depending on what you have. Oops. And I'm going to control D, go up a level, project and project a few levels. Now, just hitting solo will double check to make sure everything's kind of happening. On my ears, I'm having some issues right there. So, but it's not enough that I, I'm worried about it. I'm gonna use the in flat again to kind of grab and make sure close. Divide again, project. And I'm sitting at 400,000 one more time. Should do it. 1.6, that's fine. I have to get my details and everything else. So, hey, Dean, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. And thanks for following me on Instagram. I, I appreciate the, the links and the, and the, uh, the attention, guys, uh, to follow and stuff. That, that means a lot. Trying to build that Instagram and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty hard. 
I'm not quite sure. I'm an older guy. I'm not quite sure how that works all the time. So now that I have this, this is all cleaned up. My design is fair. I'm going to go back over to this piece. And I'm going to just go to insert. And I'm going to find that head and place it underneath there. As you can see right there, some of my ears changed a little bit. But it's due to the fact of that changing. So I could always go back now that this is all kind of cleaned up. I now have a lot more definition that I can go back into my design and bring those back in and I should be good. Okay. All right, so now let's get to cleaning and I'm going to save where I'm at. Cause I went through a few of the process. <laughs> hey, Gloom, hey Game Loser, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, true side effects. I should do. I should just do a bikini clad. I, I do enough vagina monsters. I, I, I'm surprised it's not more. But I have females in there somewhere. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring in a few of those tiny details, define my thing a little bit more, and let's go ahead and get to the eye. And I don't know. If, I know, Jax. I'm sorry. I I know. Hold on a second. The uh, dog is barking, and which freaks Jax out. He's underneath the uh, couch, if you guys can't see him, he's right there, he's hiding. This is the life of uh, working as a freelancer. I pretty much take care of the dogs all damn day. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it by looking at her, but she can piss a lake. It's kind of crazy. So it's in my best interest to make sure she has to go to the bathroom when she needs to. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just double check my object. Um, and let's do this also for, for this piece right here. Let's go ahead and go to clone again. Um, cause what I want to do is I'm going to do the same thing, duplicate. Um, it's not sitting too high right now, but I'm going to go down to Dynamesh. Let's just Dynamesh it really quickly. That's too little. Um, so let's try 2048. Okay. Looks like it did pretty well. And then I'm going to do the Z remesher. Let's do two again. That's fine. And zero mesh the sucker. So I'm pretty much cleaning up that, that sculptor's piece a little bit, giving him quads um, over top of the whole piece to make it easier for me to put the detail on. Now that the concepting is done, so if you see right there, that's where it's at. Quads look fairly good across the board. And then let's go ahead and just... I didn't have any details into that piece so I'm just going to go up a few levels and just project and then bring it over and do the details that I want onto the character okay now you know um, a lot of times I'll rename this or add another name to it so I can actually see it within my files because sometimes you get a lot of pieces and I'm just going to go take and delete out that previous one and go back to here. So now I have this headdress, should be all good. Turn on my symmetry, and then I can kind of go up my levels and kind of clean this up just a little bit. And it's good to rock. Okay. Yeah, dog. <laughs> They drive me nuts. Love them, but they drive me nuts. Okay. And I'm going to do some kind of like squigglies, kind of give it a little bit more of a tentacle. Nothing big. Okay. Okay. 
good enough. Okay. Now let's go to the eyes. The eyes are kind of pretty low, so let's go add a couple of pieces. And I'm going to start playing with eyes. And because it's alien, and I did a few different things to it, I'm going to give it two eyes, I think. I'm going to give it two pupils on the same level. Almost kind of like they're suckers in the eyes. Let's see if I want to have the pupils drop out. So the pupils drop out. I mean up. Uh, let's define them a little bit. Kind of make them like there are the tentacles. Suction cups are, I would say, of the tentacles. Okay. Looks good. Used to say they have to be perfectly round. Okay. So there we go. It's almost kind of like they have some attitude. All right. Now that I have that defined eyeball, let's go into my levels and let's just kind of smooth out some stuff. And add some details to the eye. So maybe it has a couple different way that the eye kind of closes. I'm making this up, guys. I'm just kind of just saying what if and doing it. That's all you all you really need to do. Just kind of say how about and try it. Okay. So there's my double eyelids. Go ahead and turn back on that. So now that I have that the iris in there, I'm going to go back to, let's go ahead and start to poly paint. So let's go ahead and just grab a off teal. Are veins tricky? Um, nope. Uh, how I do veins is just you. You can also create a layer, you know, uh, first let me get off of <laughs> RGB. You can paint at the same time. So if you want to kind of say, oh, I want these to be red, you know, um, you can be that drastic that you want. I, I don't want to. So you can, you can do to where you are using the pen pressure. Okay. Um, and you're just building up the the veins like so, okay? And if you want it to go thicker, I go back to the in flat to kind of pick up, because veins are never, I mean, they are bumpy and all over the place and um, and they'll have different weight, okay? So if like I'm just doing the veins like so, and then I might do the dam standard to kind of cut into the under direction. You could even use the pull to give it, you know? So veins, um, and then by having this on the layer, I can sit there and go, okay, do I want that to be less? So I can knock them back. If they weren't too believable, I could even go into a negative to where they become cracks, okay? I could then do it to where um, when you have the veins on here, you can just make a duplicate and you can add past it, okay? So there's quite a different ways you can do veins, but that's how I would go about it. Okay. Um, oh, well, yeah, there's also a, um, within your alpha, there's a veinage. I mean, you could find veins and use the alphas too, so. Yeah, you you need to, I mean, as Predrag said, it's just like, if you if you have something you just put, you want to have that variation. The reason I sculpt a lot of my stuff is because it, it brings in my hand. It brings in, you know, um, it's not going to be precise. I'm going to have some issues with it. So you want to just have that. Um, in nature, there's variation. Okay. So, I mean, 
just try it. But having that layer, you could actually just do a couple of different different things and play with them and um, use the morph target to kind of like you know add add them in some places, not in others. So okay, now I'm just kind of going back to my skin folds down here. Okay, let's get to alphas. Okay, um, I could do. I'm on the highest level right there. Um, oops, on this right there. I'm just gonna go to the standard, and drag, and I'm just gonna go ahead and import an alpha. Again, I use a tendency to kind of use animal alphas, skins from elephants, that kind of stuff. Um, I haven't really added to my uh, alphas for my ZBrush live demos and stuff. I mean, you can, you could just keep at your, your library should be huge. You should just kind of keep adding and looking for it. So, um, but let's say I'm just going to use like this one right here uh, for my general skin. The problem with this is that it's pretty definitive right off the bat. I mean, even if I knock it down, it's going to define um, the skin pretty pretty quickly. And I, I like to do some build up layers and this little section might be great for you know where it's rougher okay because skin is going to be you know dry you know you might have a if it's aliens kind of wet all kind of stuff it's going to have certain areas that will build up that i might want to save it for so on this one if i'm going to do i might do this as a, just a layer just to initially start off and play on some of this outer section not much of it. Here and there. Maybe on the chin. And some roughness down here. This skin might be a little bit rough. There, but not everywhere. And then I would say, well, all right, if I have some of it here, let's go ahead and put it to the outside of the muscles here, where it gets a little bit larger. And you can start seeing that detail. And then towards the bottom of each of those shoulder blades kind of coming up to the neck. And maybe here. So it's not everywhere. This is going to be just uh, something that's just kind of placed to emphasize some of that extra roughness. Okay, the breakup of the skin. And you can call this just like, you know, rough. Hey, what's up, Rommel? How you doing, buddy? Thanks for popping in. Rommel's an awesome artist you guys got to check out as well. Um, yeah, and as pre -Jag said, it was like on the veins side effects. If you want to sit there and go out um, of the, you know, symmetry, that will add the variation. That will add the, you know, more of the, you know, oddities or the the true nature okay so now that i have that i'm going to import in another i want i want to do more of a overall skin um not something that's super detailed something that has a little bit of noise i could actually just come down to here too and grab noise which i can show you so right now i'm just looking for um so let's say if I was, this is kind of like a human skin, okay? Um, and if you hold down Alt, it's going to give you me the negative, all right? Uh, so in some areas, I'm going to probably be doing positive, negative, and this is just going to be over most of it. Now, I made the mistake, I'm still on recording on the rough, so I want to turn that off. Put this over the general. Now it's at 1.6. I'm having trouble getting some of that detail, so I'm going to divide one more time. I have to exit this one, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete this out. Uh, I'm going to keep this. I'll just keep that. I'm just going to go ahead and just divide up because I was out of that rough. 
as you see I lost some of this transition of the detail of that brush but it's all right I'm gonna then just kind of come back in here I'm at six million so it's a little bit heavier for sure but as you can see my detail my brushes are a lot more so I'm giving it a general noise over top of this and when I come into uh, yeah just look up look up Rommel you'll, you'll see his art his art fairly well so go ahead and also when you get down towards like the mouth you know I might do some of the inverse where I'm going to the negative okay I'm just doing noise this is great for just adding for the skin catching any kind of lights that we'll be doing here in a little okay and then blend all right and I could do a couple swipes to really kind of blend into that back and blend into that other alpha that I had on it. Um, if I have a piece like right here, I could just wipe that out, like where it's just, you can see the lines of the what I had previous. Okay. So this is more of the tertiary details, more of the noise of the skin. I'm going to go probably a little bit larger as I go down the chest. Now, if it's getting a little too noisy, I'm just going to go down just a little bit. Okay. So this is just my overall skin. If if it's too much, I can, I'm can i on record, so I can just always take that off. And let me go ahead into solo mode just so I can make sure I got everything. All right. And I'm just doing quick sweeps. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to just call this skin. Let me just go ahead and add one more. Okay. And then turn this back off. And I'm just going to probably go one more alpha. Uh, I'm going to import in probably like a heavier um, pock. Um, pimple type thing and I'm just going to use this to just give a little bit more of bumps and stuff let's up the intensity each alpha will have a different intensity you need to pay attention to so be aware and I'm going to use the negative negative and positive just to kind of give some variation of this one I want to kind of rough it up. I don't need much. And I'm trying to find out some of the different areas that I want it. So I'll probably do it here. Little corners. Those extra areas and details that I wanted to, to bring your attention to. like he needs to shave or he just shaved and he's got a rough beard now if this is too much if this is something to where it's kind of getting too busy um, again I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the record and bring it down just a little bit I can reduce that alpha so if that was a little bit too rough too much let's bring it down just to give some detail that's good enough so and I also um, can take um, I'll have to check it out later. Or stay, <laughs> uh, I can do a noise. So let's go down a morph uh, target, go to surface instead, and just turn on noise. And then this will allow me to kind of 
put some noise scale to it, which we'll do an overall. So if you see, this is actually going to be, you know, you can change this, add some variation to the skin. You can go into the negative, the positive, all that kind of stuff. And you can add different alphas that you want. So if I wanted to bring in an alpha that I want to have consistent across, um, so let's say if I wanted to have kind of like an an alien type skin that's going to bring in some of that pock and the variation. You can play with all this and, and do it and then you can just say okay and what that does is it kind of will give you a quick look. If I want to apply this detail to the mesh, then you can actually just say apply to mesh. If I don't want that, I'm just going to turn that off. So I'm just, I just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, let's get to poly painting really quickly. Um, Oh, okay, let's do it on this one. So let's go ahead and just add some noise to this piece right here. Okay, so that's the piece soloed out. My noise scale, I don't want to have it that much. Let's kind of bring it to there. Okay. Um, and if so, if I say okay. So now that quickly does it to where it looks like I just have something similar to it. Be aware though that when I have applied a mesh, um, I'm going to lose some of this. So if I create a layer on this one and say apply to mesh, if you notice it's there, but it's very subtle, right? So I also want to make sure that this has enough to define it. So I definitely want to have enough polys into this to say, if I'm going to turn on that noise, apply to mesh, it's there, it's subtle. So I might need to go ahead and edit this and amplify the string. So this is something this might look like, oh, that's too much, but when you apply to the mesh, it's gonna smooth out a little bit, okay? So you have to play with it just a few times to go, okay, is this, I need it to be 0.3, okay? Apply to mesh, there we go, all right? So that's a quick way to kind of give yourself some, some alpha details. Um, and then of course you can just add on top of that. Um, So let's say if I want to give him some weird honeycombs, or let's say, you know, down here, a little bumpy cacti. You know, you can quickly just add on top of that. So let's go ahead and start poly painting. Yeah. So on this guy, um, I'm going to hold off on the eyes because I, I think I want to define the skin. Um, alien. First, I'm going to go switch over to. I could use the the skin alpha that. I got from Marlone. Uh, you can try that. I'm going to go ahead and just um, turn off I don't like working on the skin with recording onto it. As long as I have those layers off, I'm on the base layer, I can sit there and paint. So I'm going to just grab a general alpha. I like the fact that um, not having any kind of recording in my color, my poly paint, because I've had a lot of issues with it. So let's find a color. Again, we're gonna, we're seeing what the color is going to be by that other piece. So I think I might stay towards the blues, blues, purples. I mean, I know I've, I've kind of done that. I mean, it's just like, but again, it's if it's alien. Um, 
And I might just stay more towards the grays. Let's just say it's just going to be kind of towards the gray. I'm going to do color. I'm going to turn on RGB on this one. I'm on standard. I'm going to turn it off. And I'm just going to say color and then fill the object. And let's go ahead and just fill this object 100%. Okay. And let's just do 100% on this as well. I'm on the back piece. Now I'm going to switch over. Because I could always come back and just turn on the skin, guys, and I'll see it. But right now, I want to stay off of just the, um, the poly paint. I mean, just for poly painting. So now I'm just going to kind of go up. And I'm going to bring them a little to the grays. So I'm going to sort of fill them up with some of the different levels that I want, which I've done in different previous episodes. I'm going to probably bring this up a little bit higher so I can move faster. And if you want some skin variations, I can just grab a different type of alpha. Where are you at? That gives me some kind of sp splotches. Too blue. And the reason I want to kind of go from dark to light is just it allows me to bring out the details slowly and use that dark as the image inclusion cavity detail that I want to push back. In the back of the skin I might have a little bit more. In the back of the head. Okay. And it doesn't look like it's much is happening. If I was using a different material, if I was going to here, you would actually see I have a lot more of the blue put into it. This is more pushed back. It's just giving me the subtlety. It has the gray into it as well. So let's go up a little bit higher. But I might make this guy kind of more of like a gray, uh, as in gray alien type of thing. And then bring in some color in some of the different sections. And then probably bring in some skin variation like he's got, not freckles necessarily or brown spots, but he's got some extra details that we'll see. And this piece might be where I get the color from too, so we'll we'll see how well it goes. And by having this variation of alpha, it just is going to allow the color from underneath just to blend. It's not going to be a hundred percent. Um, so it's going to be allowing you to have variation in it fairly quickly. Some interesting detail. I don't like how it's working, so let's knock that out. <coughs> Is there any questions, guys? Just a little bit with a blue. Let's go up to like 80. quiet today. Bring that neck tickle out a little bit more to find it. Yeah, it's kind of, let's see, I'm, I'm kicking over to the uh, the eyes right now, so 
Um, that's using a different material to hit, so let's go ahead and chase them a <laughs> So I'm going to probably go with this little ring, and I'm going to use it to kind of define out those eyes. Fairly quickly, and let's just turn this off and let's go to freehand. those out just a little bit. Let's go up. Yeah, I could probably add some of that in there. Here in a little bit. I'm going to paint some shadow, make it look like the eye is sitting back a little bit. Let's go a little bit darker. Okay. And even though it has kind of like a little wet. I was going to paint in like a fake um, iris, but no. Let me go ahead and first. I wasn't really digging that, so let's try this again. Let's go ahead and do that alpha. So let's go back. I think that works. And let's go let's add a little bit of So what I'm trying to do is just add like a little bit of color. some warmth into it because I think I'm going to choose kind of like an off orange to come back in here and just kind of start painting in some of that orange so I want to kind of have the eye kind of have a little bit of that off color as well kind of like it's almost uh, reflecting in a way Take out some subsurface scattery warmth on the ears here. Go into the mouth, maybe just with that color. Okay. A little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, you could bring in like some of the different, like having some warmth in some of the places, that's part of that human feel to it because we have certain heat in certain places and that's where you see some of the warmth in the blood underneath. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just adding some of that. I'm going to probably go back and forth just for a little because I'm going to let the render kind of try to help me and I'm going to do some stuff in Photoshop because we are doing, yeah, three. So I'm going to... Finish this sucker out. And then this one right here, let's go color. Let's 
bring in some of that. And the reason I'm kind of keeping towards the orange at the moment, not too much, is because I'm trying to do this complementary color of the blue, I'm trying to pop the values as well. But just for the moment, let's try to more. Let's try some of the violet. So I mean, this is where some of the purple and the cool start coming in. Maybe too much. Let me maybe make some of the front. So let's separate some of the skin. So maybe some of that pink will kind of come through and you'll see it towards the back, slightly darker. So by going and picking those colors and just tossing them on, now I'm blending. I, I pulled from the top of the blue here because I wanted to make it look like it's part of the skin, like it's part of them, but it's not, it's still a little variation of them. So if this back sack right here, so we have some of that warm coming from the to the front by the flipped and tentacle thing, whatever you want to call it. And then this will just be the hood section where you'll see some of the I think that's working a little bit better. Let me pick up a little bit more white. So what we're doing is just blending him really quickly. Thank you, Tyrone. Appreciate it. Cute livestock. <laughs> He's all pursed and ready to go on a date. All right, let's see. Yeah, I, I mean, having that magenta, like this is where some of that purple can kind of come in. And then what I could do um, is once I have this kind of set up, I could borrow this color from here and then come back into the shadows and kind of bringing a little bit of that to the crevices and around. So what that does, it allows me to kind of blend in those three different colors. You know, and I can even bring in some of that purple to some splotching areas. Like maybe this little second right here. So finding those colors are part of the trick. And then once you kind of, you know, are set with a few of them, you have to just kind of let them blend together. So maybe more magenta or more of that purple underneath here. So he's not quite a gray. He's kind of, he's got a little bit of teal and ocean feel to him. So, okay. So now I'm going to kick up my intensity and I'm going to probably bring in some of this alpha to bring in some spots. some visible detail um, to wear. Now for me to see that, I might have to kind of go and make this a lot lighter. Okay. 
and then go back into that color. Let's make it a little bit darker. To help some of that detail. Again, I could take that a different color and just blend out certain sections. This right here might go a little bit higher. Okay. And I think I'm going to go back into this color. I'm turn off my alphas and I'm going to kind of maybe warm this up a little bit more. to detail out the eye, to kind of make sure that you're focusing on some of the eye. Because this is like a double, what I say, eyelid or whatever, I'm going to do the underneath to make it look like it's a little bit of the flesh section. some of that detail into the lips down here. And then I'm going to do some highlights. Now this red, I'm going to probably bring a little bit into the ear. And then highlight some of the warmer neck pieces. Um, most uh, uh, Part of this was going to be kind of like me just going over top of learning a little bit different techniques on how to render. I'm sort of learning with you guys, so I'm going to be using ZBrush to create a lot of the images to get set up in Photoshop and to just kind of see how it turns out. So it might be successful, it might not. Um, but the, you know, if I, if I never practice, if I never try different things, I, I you know, I'm, I'm not going to succeed. So. All right, so a lot of this is going to be covered up anyway. And I'm just using that same color, that warmth, and I'm just kind of going in certain areas very gently. Okay. And I might do it up to... back to my layers on this one turn them on the layers are going to help break up the skin okay which is going to help the image and stuff so I'm going to go ahead and save this and let's go into the next thing okay so let's say I'm happy with this, okay? I'm not, but I, I mean, I would like to go a little bit longer, but it's now getting through, close to three. So um, we're gonna set uh, this up into where, right now I've just been saving it as a tool, meaning like the tools, every single time I open up a tool, it's gonna wipe it out and be whatever your startup menu is gonna be and everything else with it. I'm gonna change this to a different file called a ZBR. So if I'm going to save as, it's going to be a ZPR file, and I'm going to just name it what it's going to be. Um, OK. 
Okay, what the CPR does, ZPR, is going to save everything that I pretty much have in this scene. So whatever materials, what, what this is, whatever cameras I have and everything else, um, so on. So uh, first what we're gonna do, usually in document, um, so let's say if I want to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to go to my document, I'm just gonna turn off my back and do the range. So let's go ahead and just make it a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm just setting up this scene. Um, thank you, Dean, I appreciate it. Uh, I wanna put a camera into it. So I'm gonna turn on my dynamic and I'm going to set this up to where I want to see how I want to take snapshot of this, okay? Now I could pose this, I'm not going to since we're going to just go into rendering today. Stop looking. All right, so I'm going to capture this. I think these eyes, I'm going to I want to lighten just a little bit. They're a little too blue. Okay, there we go. I want to make them a little bit more ghost-like. They're there subtly. So once you have this pose that you want to, to do it, uh, within the draw command thing, you have your dynamic. This is the what I have it on right now. My dynamic. Uh, you know, uh, dynamic perspective is on. Right now I have a camera 85. If I turn it to 50, it's just gonna get, the focal length is gonna change 35 and it's pretty much, you know, I can I can reset the pose like that, but it's changing the way that my character kind of looks. A little bit longer nose kind of thing, depending on that focal length. So I'm gonna go back to just the 85. You can also change the focal length on here if you want. So you can, you don't have to, you know, it could be 67 if you like it. You can go, like, you know, when I'm a focal length of 70, you can type that in, it's fine. Okay, um, snapshot to grid, snaps, fronts, backs, all that kind of stuff. This is just part of the of Z project, which if you go to your document, Z app link properties right here, you could do a camera through this right there. Um, so let's say I'm just going to do like so. That's my shot. I'm just gonna hit front again. Oops. Uh, let me see, clear, clear all. Yes, I'm gonna clear. This was the old way of kind of creating a camera. I'm just gonna show you a couple different ways you could do to back yourself up. Document, Z app link, and I'm just gonna say front. So you can actually have a couple different views. The new way in the 2019 is you actually have the camera, which is a true um, perspective camera, and then you can just actually say store camera. Within here, you're just gonna say shot or whatever you wanna call it. That's another camera that's also set. So if I move this, I can come to draw and I can go down and I can say my shot, and it'll bring me back to my camera, or I could have done it to my front, and it'll click me back to that camera. Okay, we're all set. We have um, this material, uh, on, and we're kind of set up, but what we're going to do now is we're gonna go up to the render menu, okay? And I'm gonna open up the render properties. This is where you're actually going to do a lot of, like we're gonna turn on ambient occlusion and, and uh, so on, but I wanna do a wax preview on this one and I'm going to open this up. Let's go ahead and just get rid of this window and I'm going to click on the materials. I'm going to bring the materials over. Okay. So within the materials section with on this material, Mr. Skin, he actually set up modifiers. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more of a wax. Okay. Because I want to have some translucency to it. Okay. I'm going to change the temperature. So as you can see right here, it's a little bit translucent. I'm going to go to the modifiers, and this is where you can kind of play. I can add more ambient to bring up the material brighter. Uh, if I want to sit there and have it look a little bit um, more alien, I can make it the diffuse. I'm pumping up the diffuse. Okay. Let's go back down. Uh, my temperature is going to change it to warm to cool. My specular. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the specular highlight. So I'm pretty much manipulating this material right here that I'm actually using. So I'm creating my own. You can add noise, you can do, you know, um, quite a different color bump. This is where you're bringing in, um, you know, it's, it's adding, uh, based on my color, based on my stuff, it's just kind of adding more 
I mean, as you can see, it's kind of looking a little bit old, but let's let's pump it up just a little bit to give some detail to it. Uh, color diffuse, you know, some of these things are going to work, some aren't. Depends what you have. High dynamic. Your anisotropic diffuse is going to where the diffuse is going to come in and wipe that out. If you want more um, the details to pop out, you're just going to go to the negative. Let's go ahead and just bring a specular. Is going to just again do a little bit more detail to the white uh, to the uh, mask. And wax. Sorry, guys. So you have a whole bunch of different things you can play with, and you can change the ambient occlusion. You can actually change the material height. You can do, you know, pretty pretty cool things. So once you're happy with this. Uh, once you kind of say, okay, I like um, some of the different things, maybe knock that color bump. Again, see that color bump if I go way up, it's pretty much giving tons of stuff. So I'm going to kind of go back to here, and I'm going to go back up to my ambient and make it a little bit more translucent. Okay. So we're fine in that. Stronger the wax, the more you kind of kind of see that together. So now that we have this, we have the document kind of already set up. Now, by the way, when I render these out, the the size is very dependent on how much of the detail. So I'm going to actually have some pixelization because it's going to be kind of low. Um, so if you want to make this uh, whatever size, this is where you change it. You could just say you know uh, double. You can click on here and then whatever you put this to, it will double the size by doing this one. Or you can make your own width and height just turn off pro pro means it's just going to keep consistent to whatever this initial size was um, so if i'm going to zoom out i'm using pretty much the whole camera right now so um now that we have this done i'm going to do a quick what you call a bpr rendering but let's go into the render properties really quickly i'm going to turn on my ambient occlusion subsurface scattering um, i don't really have any fog or whatever i'm fine with that um, these are going to be the render passes is where you're going to see all that stuff happen. My shadow, this is going to be the angle. So the, the longer the angle, the, the softer it's going to be. I'm going to keep it to like ray of 12 because again, I'm not really concerned. Uh, I want this done fast to show you guys rather than just done, you know, hundred percent final. If you want to have a smoother, you know, shadows, all that kind of stuff, the higher the rays that you do, the, the better the detail you're going to get, but the longer it's going to take. Okay, so once we're all set, I'm going to go ahead and just hold Control R, a uh, Shift R, I mean, to render, which is pretty much just like hitting this button right here, and it's going through these samples. So it's rendering the empty occlusion and soft surface, soft surface scattering is going to take a little bit longer. So when I go back down in my BPR render pass, it's going to give me my composite, which is everything that you actually see. It's going to give me my shaded, which is just going to be my diffuse, my depth, which is the Z depth, so things closer or you know brighter the height. It's going to give me my shadow as you can see right there and the shadow it's kind of um i can change that angle to have a longer deeper shadow uh, shadow um my ao maybe occlusion my mask which is giving me what you know as you can see it's kind of jaggy whatever my sub surface scattering so the higher these levels are like the rays and everything that would come down to here my angle my rays everything that will get smoother that will get better but of course it takes a lot longer okay so how uh, Raf said he did a, um, a, a thing a tutorial a long time ago where he would actually just go ahead and change the lights and everything else. But there is something within ZBrush. I, I don't know if a lot of you guys know there was a plugin that they added a little bit ago. When you go down to Z plugin, you go to ZBrush to Photoshop. Okay, within here, there's a lot of different things that you can kind of set up. So your albedo is just going to be your diffuse. Your AO is ambient occlusion. Best is going to do a best rendering. Uh, BPR is just the general BPR that you see. Color bump is going to kind of give you just based on certain shaders. Um, and actually, Joseph Dress did a really nice video too on this one. But this is going to save a lot of time of going through and creating depth lights. So I want the lights. Uh, I want the Z depth. I want my mask. I don't definitely need my normal shadow, spec, subsurface, my structure. Um, don't need my sub tool idea. Now, this right here on your materials. So if I sat there and I wanted a different material on this character, so the best thing to do is usually just grab the object so that you can see pretty well. I'm going to go to my different materials, and when I go through my materials, you're going to see a quick display of what that's going to look like on the character. So let's say if I want a kind of a green metallic um, or, you know, that cap, you know, 
really dark. So what you're trying to do is just to try a, find a few different materials that you like, and then you can quickly go down to here, because we're setting this up and say, I want, this is material two. It's gonna ask you to replace, I had set up a previous one in there, so you say yes, and you wanna make sure that you are your material two on. I'm going to pick another one. Say if I want to have where my ZBrush Illustrate paint. If I want to go add that to my material three, yes. And then I'm going to make sure I get that in there. So this is just giving me <clears throat> all the different material hits to be transferred. So let's say if I want some kind of weird blue, jelly bean blue, I can come into here, say material four, yes. And let's go make sure we got this added. You have to click this little orange ones, otherwise it will not, that little orange box, otherwise it will not happen. It's going to do a reflective. It's going to do a few different ones that are already in here. Um, so, but if I, let's say if I want to have like a super wet, you know, specular, that's going to be more globally over top of the whole thing, I can add that material to it. So I'm going to say that's material five. And add that. And let's just do one more just to actually see. So if I say, if I want to bring in some warmth to the character, I might choose like the SC raw chicken or whatever. I'm going to grab in some of the warmth and the material. So it's not all blue. I can actually play with that later. Hit the material and just set this up. So now once I am done, I'm on my Abito, AO, best, whatever. I'm just going to send to Photoshop now. Um, I should have saved the document before. Um, oh, it looks like it did it for me. Okay, and what it's going to do, it's running through every single material hit, AO, and it's going down whatever objects. The more objects you have in that scene, the longer it's going to take. That's just a BPR, nice best rendering with the shadows. So this is doing all your files for you. And then it's going to open up your, in your Photoshop, and then this is where we can kind of tweak. So we're going to give it a second. That's the bump. That's the specular. That's the regular. And then right now, as you see, it's rendering. This is rendering out the AO, AO and SSS. You see that flicking back and forth. And once that's done, you could always just kind of keep those two things. And it's going back to the, the material that's already kind of had. So it's rendering the different samples for the different levels. And honestly, uh, uh, the larger your file is, the longer it will take. Don't think it's not doing anything. Just kind of pay attention. Just be aware. So test this out a few times to get kind of... It's, it's new to me too. Like I said, I'm learning this. So, um, but I wanted to show it because I think once you kind of get into the Photoshop, it's kind of nice and you can kind of mix it up and, and do that um, to help you out. I think it's going through the the subsurface scattering in the in the uh, AO on all of it. Should have just done a one pass. So sub tool seven switching. Okay, yeah. So it's doing an AO, which should have just been fine for um, the one material. That's kind of weird, but. <laughs> Ozzy, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love talking though. So, um, and like I said, I was planning to use this material to kind of give a more global spec. To, so that's gonna that's a great one to if you want to have the character look really wet. And since this character is sort of kind of a weird octopus alien kind of stuff, that's that's done. This is the basic material that they. Um, it's getting close to being done. These are the lights. I'm surprised why we're doing the AO shadowing across. But this is kind of good to show um, what it's doing. So what it's doing right now, instead of going how you used to do, you had to go up into the light uh, function right into here, open this up, and you'd have to do a top. And Because Raph did this a long time ago where he showed you. And so he's moving. He moved around the different light to give the front and the back and everything. So what it's doing, in your, when you see this Photoshop open, it's giving you all these different layers to allow you to sit there and blend and play. And it's turning them all into the smart objects as well. Um, 
and uh, just look up ZBrush to Photoshop. Uh, Drust did a more explanation of each one of these, but I wanted to show you for this one. So right now it's opening up all those levels, it's it layers. It's giving you all in order for you to kind of play with, and boom, it's it's um, pretty damn nice. So now we have this. Uh, so this is my character with the pose, everything on it. So if I go to um, back to my ZBrush. Again, if I want to save this, save as, I'm going to just save over top of that ZPR. And then I'm going to go back into my Photoshop. Oops. Okay. So on here, uh, within the mask, this is the mask for the whole thing. Um, okay, so that's what these two masks are. To go down through, I'm not going to deal with effects or my geometry or my lights or my materials quite yet. Okay, so the first one is on the bottom. So this is going to be your flat color, your black. So this is a um, this is where you can add and you can sit there and say I want to kind of just oh, it looks like it opened up an older Photoshop so it's weird okay so if I want to sit there and just add this different background it's 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 pretty much all ready to go the mask and everything is on on it okay yeah this did open up to my old Photoshop great so let me see file save as let me just save this to my Thing real quick guys so I can open up my correct okay let me just try okay well I'll try to I'll try to work this through so on here because this material was the one I was last on there's my uh, this is my BPR. This is the best. As you can see, it just did like a nicer render. So I usually just use the best render as the base. Um, it should have been like that one general material. Uh, that's fine. But on this Albedo, so this is where you can actually change and you can start using this to blend. So I can kind of start bringing in to kind of play with some of the variations just by going through. Um, the different mixes like if I wanted to do uh, let's do a screen and let's go with my fill so right now it's kind of flesh but let's say if I want to take out this um, basic color right now uh, I'm gonna go into my materials you have all these different materials there is my raw chicken this is the one where it's going to be my board and cool so then I have this one which is going to be my zebra that's the jelly and then this is the specular. This, I'm gonna this I'm gonna treat as more of a overlay. So maybe a color dodge type of thing. No, actually, let me do a screen. And let's change our fill down a little bit. Okay. Um, but first, I want to kind of. All right. I think I want want to go more towards the blue, and I'm gonna blend this one. To get closer to how I was doing this before. Okay, so I want to I want to have some of that warmth. That's this chicken right here. If I take that out, see how that warmth is. I'm using this one to kind of screen. I can actually play with that a little bit if I want to do this. If I want to change this color, I don't know if you guys know this. If you do, uh, let's say a hue saturation over top. If I hold down Control and I click to this bottom underneath, I am now going to control this albedo. Okay. If I don't want that, I'm going to just mix it. So let's go ahead and make this a duplicate just in case. And then let's do this again. So I'm going to make those, because uh, this is a smart object, what's happening. So on here, if I click on the hue saturation, I can then quickly change colorize. So you can actually see it kind of change the darkness. So I can use that hue saturation of what I have, because remember I have the thing above blending it. So I can bring in some different variations, some more yellow, um, if I want to colorize and do a few different things to it. So um, you also have the different, you know, you can play with different variations of this if you want. If you want to go for default, add some more saturation, which usually you don't uh, go too high. That's a quick way to kind of give you some. So if I turn this into a normal, you'll be able to see it a little bit more. Okay. So let's just say we're doing a blend. Okay. 
that's on the board and cool. If I want to bring in more blue of this, remember I have that, this is the zebra eye, so I've got that wetness going to it. But if I want to change this, bring in some darks to it. And let's bring in some more of the... So now we're getting some translucency between those colors and a couple other things to kind of help us out. So now we're going to go to the um, geometry. So this right here, I'm going to just use this to kind of give me some of the... It's sort, it's sort of like acting like a normal within, within the games kind of stuff. It's just giving you a lot of my sculpting detail. So right there, if I if I have it as an overlay, I'm bringing back a lot of that definition in that I had in my sculpt, whereas before this is starting to get flattened out. So I want to bring some of that back in. So I'm going to go ahead and just reduce. Now the overlay, the opacity is just the overall layer. The fill is kind of the blending that I want to do to the character. So I want to add some more of that detail up there. So now, as you can see right there, it's going flat. So now I'm pumping up and giving more structure to the face that I had sculpted. This one is the color bump. This is going to add a lot of that high uh, detail, uh, tertiary detail. This one, again, you can kind of play with all the different levels. Try to find what you want to bring out. So here's like the difference. Let's see what the difference can do. No, don't like that. So this is part of the game where you're just kind of playing around, trying to find what works, what doesn't. Uh, this is also bringing a highlight from the top. So I'm just defining this just a little. And then this is going to be my Z depth. Now the Z depth, you can set it to um, usually screen or overlay um, and what that's going to do is just going to kind of push the um, the details further out so let's see let's do a soft light hard lights too hard okay and if I do control I I'm just going to inverse so that way you can have the highlight around you know it's just subtleties. And this is going to take a little bit for you, for you to play, but, you know, it's great that the fact that, you know, ZBrush it, it did it for you. Usually the, uh, the shadow is on, if you can see right there underneath the eyes. It's set to 50. You can darken that up, or you can even just kind of make it a, a duplicate to actually darken if you want. The subsurface scattering. This one I actually like to do um, to where you can actually change your subsurface scattering, where you have, um, right now it's just black and white. And so if I want to bring color into it to where I'm making this character just a little bit um, different. So I'm going to go to my image adjustments. And I'm going to go to gradient map. So the gradient map is going to give me a couple different color choices. If I click on this, I'm going to choose um, just, I don't want it to go black to transparent or whatever, or certain blue. I'm just going to take this color. So right now, this is the foreground. This is the background. So this is the surrounding um, detail. I want to kind of play with those colors so I'm going to just click on this little button and I'm going to click and bring in so this is where I can add like I want to maybe bring in a little bit of greenish teal a little more towards the teal but my main concern is to go to the color here It's kind of hard to see at the moment just because of the background. But then if I want to bring in more of that to... I'm moving this down toward the blend so I have a lot more of that teal um, coming to the, the surrounding. Now, I could do to where I say okay with that. That's the general uh, uh, subsurface scattering. And it's also like a smart filter. So I can go into here and click this quickly and just you know change it. Or I can actually make a duplicate of this and I'm going to change this into a more of a colored dodge. Um, and then I, you know, can bring down the, the fill a little bit. So that way I can kind of get that little highlight. Or you can do... Yeah, 
And let's say if you want to use this and say, well, I don't want that blue necessarily. I'm going to click this. Let's go with more of a different color so it blends in. Okay. It's okay with that. And I just added another one just to kind of have the variation break down and say, okay, say, okay. So this right here is just adding a little bit of that warmth and variation while I have some of the subsurface scattering on that one. This is going to be my reflectivity, my spec. That was that spec material. So this is where if I do too much, it kind of blows up. Uh, 25 is usually where it has it, but I already had that global spec from that one material. So if I come down here and turn that off, you can actually see some of that how much is coming through. This is where you can go back and just say, all right, I need to push it a little bit. Okay. AO, empty occlusion. I, with that gradient that I just did for the subsurface scattering, I could do the same thing and give some color to the ambient occlusion. Um, <clears throat> you know, I could do like a duplicate, you know, to kind of really pump in back. Or I could do two duplicates, but I'm gonna come into my image and let's just go back to the adjustment to the gradient map and you know that's where I can bring it into the warmth pinks say okay all right so that's the sub that's the uh, image occlusion now the cool thing on this one is like if it's too much overall I want you to double click on this one this is going to bring into your layer style and you have the function between the different layers right this is this layer the underlying layer but if you hold down alt and you click apart it's going to blend that out so you can actually just bring in some of what's underneath you can do straight and kind of say I want to bring that in so it could be a smooth transition so if I split those it's going to blend the underneath. So this is a quick way to kind of give um, so as you see right there it kind of goes on. If I want to blend those layers together make them subtle it's sort of doing a gradation between black white kind of stuff. Now just because I have this on multiply doesn't mean I need to have it for everything else. So I'm going to probably go So you can see I'm warming it back up again. And these layers just keep going on and on. You can kind of try to do you know, a few different things with it, see what you like. Because um, every single time you are making a change down here, if I brought in more of this guy or I brought that chicken back, you're, you're, you're able to play with this. Um, now this color is very uh, specific. This is where I might kind of go, I want to, um, so let me kind of open up So let's say if I wanted to add in some weird backgrounds, right? You know, this is where you can bring in some backgrounds, add translations, you can start to play with and go, is that working, is that not? Uh, so a lot of times what I'll do is with this broken up, I could sit there and say, okay, I wanna um, play around with a few of these, these kind of aliens. So let's just go ahead and make them, you know, alien background, do some blend variations. Okay, that's fine. Uh, another trick you guys can do is with the masks um, right here if you hold down control and you click it it's going to give me the mask uh, so you can say well I want to do um, put this on top and then you can do a stroke so let's say image or edit stroke and I'm going to do it to the outside and let's do um, 
yeah, this is my older CS for some reason. It opened up into, that's weird. So if I have a stroke, I can then, you know, take this and do kind of like a quick haze, lighten. You can also do filter. Let's do kind of like a Gaussian blur to where it kind of blends out. So he's almost kind of got like a, um, he's super glowy. And then with that, uh, a lot of people do where they will have a new layer underneath the mask. And I'm going to just go ahead and um, just fill it. So what I did is you can't see it right now is there's a black um, silhouette of this character. So then I can go back and then go, and go to that blur, Gaussian blur, and what that's going to do is just kind of help me pop him from the background just a little bit to kind of do this. Um, now, as you can see right there, if I go in, this is because due to the rendering, that's the reason I've got it really pixely because I'm pretty low, low level. Um, and then what you do is to do these renders, you know, it's it just makes your life a little bit easier. I can then go into, um, Say if I wanna blend this out. And then put in those details that I So you can have fun with this, um, keep playing with a lot of these different, you know, uh, trying to find stuff. Uh, you can intermix them. Um, let's see if I'm going to add like over top of this, oh, that's a big file. U is going to bring up the hue saturation, guys, and I'm going to you're fine, Jaxi. So I'm just adding like a little bit of dirt to kind of bring them into the scene, not much, but just kind of to blend them into the background, give some variation and detail. You know, there we go. Any questions on this? This one looks He's in space. Um, thank you, Cressio. I appreciate it. Um, Panectus, uh, the, the anti-lazing. That's just when you when you're in the ZBrush. Uh, all you need to do is just to sit there and make sure that um, this. Let me go back to the skin. That this is actually set up to on your document is really dependent on where you got the anti-lazing. Also, when you're in the rendering and you have 
the rays on the BPR shadows and the rays on the subsurface scattering um, and whatever filters you have you can add um, so that's where you kind of really make sure that it's a lot smoother and everything else so this is where you know um, you can have some fun with it so if I zoom out I mean, and, and like, the thing is like with this right here, like it's pretty, I mean, I, you have the, this, the translucency and stuff like that. It's, I think it's really cool. Um, but, uh, you know, this is where, if you want to go back to your, your Photoshop, I'm not too sure why. So let me do this. is weird but um that's where you can actually just this is what it should have been i think the thing is it got confused or i've lost some stuff on to this is what my normal photoshop looks like so that was kind of weird Was a really old Photoshop. So yeah, you gotta keep going back and forth and playing with it, and you know, like, um, and if you if you really like, right now this masking is all dependent on on this. So I go, I could go to this mask here, and then I could just say filter, and then I can do my Gaussian blur, and that's going to, as you can see right there, it's starting to blend out. Um, so this will help some of that because what I'm doing is I'm just blending to the background uh, that's the eye that's the highlight and I, I totally suggest keeping track of what the hell these are because it will get very um, confusing so like right now I have this as a stroke. If I did, um, and, and you know, let's see, duplicate. Let's do that filter and let's do the blur. Let's do a motion blur. Actually, not a motion blur. Let me see, filter. There's a lot of different stuff you can do in here, but the um, I usually use. Gaussian blur because that will just fade out from two points. So it's got kind of a ring. And this is if I want to. Now I could do Control U, and I could just take out this hue saturation on, on either of these, or I can do this to where I'm going to to a hue saturation. I'm going to Control click both of those, and then I can just hold down uh, Control and then click. So now on this one, I'm controlling both these. So let's say if that is this is too blue, I can actually just desaturate that some. Or I should be able to. Or change my coloration. Looks like it. Hold on, I lost. Sometimes it's kind of tricky. So then on this hue saturation, that's just going to control what color I'm bringing into. These each individually still need to kind of blend in this kind of help. So there we go. 
So if we have that done, that you know, I mean, that's pretty much it for I think the the lesson kind of stuff. You can use the power of ZBrush to do a lot of your renders. Those are you that don't have KeyShot or you know, can, I mean, you know, Arnold. There's a lot of phenomenal rendering programs. Um, this allows you to kind of keep this within you know um, ZBrush and uh, still kind of use the power of Photoshop. And so you're just doing the two programs. So again, since I had that, if I go to my document, my Z Light, if I click on my front view, I should have this one. I could just take a you know um, document export the screen grab as well into my um, and all I did is I just went into I just saved. So then if I want to bring in that ZBrush grab exactly to bring in some of that um, mask it or whatever that's the ZBrush grab in Photoshop. So, and if you like certain parts of this and you just want to go, you know what, I want to bring this in as well, um, I can go into my depth or, or, you know, I can bring in, it's somewhere in here, and then I can use that along with all of those. So as you can see right there, that's, that's affecting it. So that's my um, mask. But every single time you do, you just want to kind of probably go back and readjust for your final. So it's gotten a little too dirty. So I'm using this ZBrush grab along with all of them. So, all right, I think that's that's it for this tutorial, guys. This episode. My. I don't know. I don't know what you call this guy, but that's that's it. So, um, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess I'm glad to help. Um, Alex, I'll definitely try. I mean, it's like I think I'm running out of stuff to kind of teach. Uh, you guys, I mean, well, there's never enough to to teach. I really can do that, but it's it's. Um, let me know what you guys want to hear too. So, I mean, it's kind of hard. I mean, I, I'm. Jumping around with what I'm learning as well. So, uh, yeah, it does, Alex. That could be a, a trance music of some kind of squid, squid porn. Uh, where did you get all the materials, DD? Uh, actually, just you can go to ZBrush uh, Pixelogic.com. They have like a download cent center for all this stuff. Um, there's like different places you can look online. Um, I pretty much keep to some. I have tons of materials, but I I only use certain amounts. Um, so you don't want to overload your stuff because they will take some space on your computer. Um, yeah, I mean, this, uh, Alex, this is great for kind of give an idea and you can kind of just, you know, um, so if someone, if I do a kit or something that I want to paint, uh, you know, the kit, I can give a quick little, hey, this is what I'm thinking in my mind. And a lot of times for my designs, I have never really thought of color. That's That was my bad. I kind of stayed away from it. I just did sculpts and just had fun. So, but, um, but all right, guys, I think, I think I'm good. It's uh, probably one of my longer ones. So drop me a line if you want. Um, you guys have my email addresses. Uh, if you want to add me to your Twitch or whatever, it's like Twitch underscore whatever. Um, dang it. I said it before. What is my Twitch? Spark underscore B Barley. That's what it is. So if you want to just add me to your your Twitch, that'd be great. At some point in time, I will be doing my own channels. I will be doing my own thing kind of stuff. Um, so, and then just drop me a line with any kind of questions or anything else. So, hopefully that's it. If not, I appreciate you guys showing up today and have a great weekend. Okay. Take care, guys.